Hi, this is Terry from Tree Marie Soapworks. Today I'm going to be showing you this soap. It's a variation on Taiwan Circling Swirl. So let's get started with the colors. First we have a half a teaspoon of groovy green mica. And this is used at a rate of one teaspoon per pound of oils and it gives you a light green color. And that's what I was going for for this tutorial today. And I'm using a palette knife and a sheet of plexiglass to mix my colors. And next we have a fourth of a teaspoon and an eighth of a teaspoon of Rainforest Green Mica. You can see I'm just diluting it with a little bit of olive oil, just enough to get it wet. Next we have a fourth of a teaspoon of Ravishing Red Mica and a sixteenth of a teaspoon of Purple Rain Mica. A lot of people ask me why I mix my colors this way. For one, it's to get all the little specks of colorant out, but also I have an art background and I had this palette knife from college and I just love using it. It's just one of my favorite tools. Next we have a half a teaspoon of Purple Rain Mica and just a 0.15 cc scoop of Ultramarine Blue. Oxides and Ultramarines can be a little more difficult to get the specks out of. That's why this one I took a little bit more care to get all the specks out of it. All these colorants that I'm using today are from Elements Bath & Body. Next I have a fourth of a teaspoon of Smooth Coconut Carbon, also known as Activated Charcoal. And I just mixed this in order to use to darken some of the other colorants that I used. So I'm not going to use the whole thing, I just wanted a little for darkening. Next we're measuring fragrance. Today I'm using Cranberry Salsa, it's from Rustic Essentials, and it's a really nice fragrance and it behaves well in cold process soap. And here I already melted my oils and I'm straining my lye solution into my oils. Today I'm soaping at 90 degrees, but I usually soap anywhere from 85 to 95 degrees. Okay, I weighed this bowl before I started, so I know the amount, and now I'm going to weigh the bowl and the contents in the bowl, and then I will subtract off the weight of the bowl so I'll have the weight of my batter. I have planned to divide it up by percentages, so I figure out all my percentages before I stick blend so that I don't have to work against time. So now I know how much I'm gonna pour off individually. I have just stick blended this until emulsion and now I'm ready to separate the batter according to the percentage that I figured out earlier. So this first one is for the light green and it's 25% of the batter. And then we have 15% of the batter for the white batter. and 20% of the batter for the dark green. Next we have 15% of the batter for the red purple. And last we have 25% of the batter for the blue purple. Okay, now it's time to add our colorants to our separated batter. So, for the white, that's the only one I haven't covered yet. The white, I used one teaspoon plus a little bit of dispersed titanium dioxide. And I, I always have that pre-dispersed. And I disperse it at a rate of one part titanium dioxide to three parts of oil. And I always use olive oil. And now we just mix it all in and to make sure everything's evenly dispersed.
Okay, now it's time to add the fragrance. And I just figured out the percentages of fragrance ahead of time, so I know what I'm adding to each one of them. And you don't have to do this this way. Again, it's it's up to you. You can eyeball it if you want. It'll come out just fine. But I always use the exact amount of grams. Okay, next get your mold ready. And also we're going to be putting two of these colors into squeeze bottles. So I'm getting my liners ready and putting them in the squeeze bottles. And for this one it would be the white and the pink that are going to go in the squeeze bottles. For this one you want a fairly light trace in, in these. You don't want a heavy trace or it just won't move like it should to make the swirls. In my last video that was Taiwan circling swirl, it was my video technique number three. I showed the difference between a skewer and a skinny stick that was wider than a skewer or a chopstick. For this one, I decided to do it even bigger. The skinny stick was a little bit less than a fourth of an inch. This popsicle stick is three eighths of an inch. And I think I might even go bigger to a tongue depressor, which is five eighths of an inch. Okay, now the batter is ready, and first I'm going to be pouring the pink and white batter into the squeeze bottles. Now I'm just situating the, the colors where I want them, and I hold the dividers down while I pour so it doesn't seep underneath to the other side. And just add a little at a time and then I'm just adding and sque squeezing in the other colors just wherever I want them. And I think next time I do this I'm going to put little extensions on the squeeze bottle so that I can get down deeper because this the color the white and the pink didn't go down that far and you'll see when I split the soap in half that it didn't it the whites and pinks didn't get as far down in. So the top layer looks good, but then the middle's not so much. It's got more of just the green and purple. Okay, now it's time to remove the dividers. And then I just add a little bit more color at the ends where it did, I didn't get it before. Go ahead and tap down your mold to release any air bubbles. And now it's time to start swirling. So you insert your popsicle stick parallel to the bottom and top of the mold. And just do your swirl. This is the fun part. And I like the results of using an even bigger stick for this time. So I think I'm going to go ahead and use the tongue depressor next time. I want to try it. I might make the lines a little further apart. But I think it'll really drag and it'll look pretty cool. I'm not crazy about how the soap looks at the end, especially when you do the, when you go around in this next step, you turn your stick 90 degrees and, and go around the mold. I just only needed to do it twice in this one because of the wider stick. 
but I'm not crazy about how it looks in the end, so I'm going to try something different next time. I covered this soap and I put it through gel and I leave it undisturbed for 48 hours. Some places don't have to do that, but I found here in Indiana, it's just too humid and I think the humidity causes soda ash if you uncover it earlier. So for me, it works to leave it covered up for two days. And now it's time to split the loaf horizontally. I use this wire soap cutter from Brambleberry and you see I had cardboard underneath there. I have two pieces that I use just to, to make it a little higher to make the proper thickness that I want. And I have to cut a little off the top so I can fit it in my boxes. So I have these two, that's the top and then there's the middle that's the more green and purple one. And I was going to cut these through both at the same time, but I accidentally left one of my cardboard pieces in there. So I had to cut this, um, see it wouldn't go through there. I had to cut it and then, then mark it again and cut the bottom layer. And now all that's left is beveling the soap, and I just used an old-fashioned vegetable peeler for this. Thank you so much for watching and if you like my videos and you would like to see more like this just hit the subscribe button and if you'd like to receive notifications you can hit the bell button if you want and I appreciate you watching and I look forward to showing you more of my techniques.